Okay, I want to get started, everybody. Please take your seats. I would like to advise all those present that notice of this regular meeting of August 16th, 2023 has been provided to the public in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meeting Act of the State of New Jersey. Notice of time and place of this meeting has been included in the annual notice of meetings, which was posted and filed with the city clerk and the Jersey Journal and the Star Ledger. An additional notice of time and place was posted and filed with the city clerk and was forwarded to the Jersey Journal and Star Ledger on August 11th, 2023. The regular meeting of the Municipal Council of the City of Bayonne is now in session. Ms. Medina, please call the roll. Mr. Booker? Here. Mr. Carroll? Here. Mr. Perez? Here. Ms. Weimer? Here. Mr. Lapalusa? Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Medina, before we get started, I'm going to call our emergency management coordinator, uh, Mr. Ferranti up. He's going to explain about our new uh, Bay 911 emergency notification system. And uh, you can do this through an app. He's going to explain a little bit more about it. Testing. Thank you, Mr. President. Council, thank you. Uh, I just would, uh, want everybody to be aware that uh, the city of Bayonne has transitioned <laughs> off of our previous emergency notification system, which was Swift Reach 911, and we have now moved to Bay 911, which is uh, the name of our new system, and that's done by a company called Rave, who, who bought Swift Reach. Anybody who's already enrolled and receives robocalls and text messages, you don't have to do anything. However, we ask that everyone please, there's a new, our new symbol, and just so everybody's aware, that was done by uh, students at Bayonne High School in Mrs. Rabbit's uh, graphic arts design class. They're, they're the ones who came up with that beautiful design for, for our uh, emergency notification system, so I wanna thank them for that. But if everybody can just go and text Bay 911 to 67283, you will be enrolled and you could receive emergency text alert alerts for whether it's an accident, we shut down a highway, uh, weather situations, any type of emergency notification, and also you'll be enrolled for uh, robocalls if the mayor or uh, someone else needs to put out a robocall with critical information. So this is available to everyone. Again, if you're already enrolled, you don't need to do anything. However, I urge everyone please to go ahead and text this so that you do get the text alerts, okay? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. Mr. Franti. Appreciate, you. Thank you. appreciate your information. I'm sorry, you text Bay 911 to 67283. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our first item is an ordinance of the City of Bayonne in the County of Hudson, State of New Jersey amending the revised general ordinances to Air Chapter 39, providing for the establishment of a municipal water and wastewater utility. It was introduced at the meeting held May 17th, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin board as required by law, with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at the meeting of June 14th, where it was postponed to the meeting of July 19th, and again postponed to the meeting of August 16th, and is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing and a resolution moved by the council president giving the ordinance second reading. Mr. Perez, will you second? And on second reading, Mr. Booker. Okay. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance of the city of Bayonne in the county of Hudson State in New Jersey amending the revised general ordinances to add chapter 39, providing for the establishment of a municipal water and wastewater utility. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. Okay. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? So move. Second. 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 And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. 
Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. And resolution ordering sign final so moved. passage. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. 02 is an ordinance of the City of Bayonne County of Hudson, New Jersey, adopting the redevelopment plan entitled <clears throat> Sampson Site Redevelopment Plan for the property located at 108 Avenue F, 104-106 Avenue F, and 101 East 21st Street, which is identified as Block 457.01, Lots 2, 3, 4, and 5, as shown on the official tax map of the city, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law, which was introduced and passed the first reading at the meeting held July 19th was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin board as required by law with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of April 16th is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing and a resolution moved by council member Perez Mr. Lapalusa will you second second and on the resolution Mr. Booker Aye. Mr. Carroll Aye. Mr. Perez Aye. Ms. Weimer Aye. Mr. Lapalusa Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance of the City of Bayonne County of Hudson, New Jersey, adopting a redevelopment plan entitled Sampson Site Redevelopment Plan for the property located at 108 Avenue F, 104-106 Avenue F, and 101 East 21st Street, which is identified as Block 457.01, Lots 2, 3, 4, and 5, as shown on the official tax map of the city. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? Move. Second. And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. And a resolution ordering final passage. So moved. And Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Uh, as this is for final passage, I understand there was a meeting held last night, and I haven't had a chance to fully converse with the representative from that ward, so as with last month, I'll defer to Ms. Weimer. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? So <clears throat> I'd like to share uh, with the greater community, we did have a community meeting yesterday in which um, the developer for both this project and the one immediately after that's also on the agenda uh, did share with us some significant information, took the time out of their day to provide um, time and question and answer period. What we learned and what was agreed upon um, this specific site, we'll, we'll talk about O2 right now specifically. As it stands, the ordinance right now allows for a seven-story building. And what the, what the developer is proposing is a six-story building um, with uh, just over 100 units. The developer has agreed to provide, and I, I say provide and not offer, so provide parking with every lease, with every unit you will be entitled to one spot, which is different than most other developments here in Bayonne. So it's a, an allowance that we have asked the developer to make to which he has conceded to and he has agreed to do. We also asked the developer to take into consideration with a, a development of 100 units in that small area <clears throat> to consider an internal loading and unloading zone for safety reasons. For it is the Avenue F where this development's going to go is one lane in each direction, and the cross streets are one way streets, also one way, one lane, excuse me, not even one lane in each direction, one lane. So for safety reasons, we asked the developer if they would consider internal loading and unloading zones so that there'll be no double parking in front of the building won't create additional traffic or safety hazards because there's also a school and a church in the area. The developers also agreed to that. So right now, the developer is well within his rights um, and has already agreed to several concessions for the city. So for O2, um, I, I vote aye. Absolutely, so I'm sorry. 
Not at all, please. So just come up to the microphone, yeah. please. Taking my question, um, you're saying the developer agreed to do things. Are you? Should we then amend the plan to include some of these things? Because the indoor loading, I'm, I'm sure, is it in the plan? It, it is not in the plan, Sue. And um, it's funny, and I apologize uh, because I, I forgot to mention that. So the the attorney for the developer is here. I spoke with him, Matt. Please, please come yeah. up. I did speak with him. He agreed to amend the plan. I I, I hold him at his word. I, yeah. I don't think he's going to. Can we have Mr. So, Posada just speak on that, though? Yeah, if I may. My name is Matthew Posada. I'm from the law <clears throat> firm Sills, Cummins & Gross, and I represent the developer and subsequent uh, applicant, uh, Joe Gomes of J&J &J Builders. Uh, I did have an opportunity to speak to Councilwoman Weimer, and that is absolutely correct. What we will be doing is part of our lease agreements for all of our tenants. It'll stay in there as part of their rent. They also have a dedicated parking space. In addition, we're going to try to do our best to change or modify, I should say, the internal uh, layout so that we can provide uh, loading and unloading within the building so there would be no double parking. More than likely, we think we could make it work as is today. If we couldn't, we'd have to lose one parking space, and that's what we would be proposing to the board, board as in planning board. So that would be our modification so that we can accommodate both those requests. If I could ask for an additional thing to put in your lease agreement, uh, a mention that the tenants cannot get on-street parking. Yes, I, I apologize. That We actually spoke about that as well. That would be in okay. lease agreement as well. Because uh, that's always been a contentious thing that other landlords are not putting in their leases. Correct. And we also understand that we'd also be responsible for our own hauling for the refuse as well. Okay. Thank Did, you, Mr. Yep. No, I got a question. I understood when we voted for this building that each one was going to get a parking for each unit. Is that the way it is? Yes. Thank you. Yep. Regardless if it's a studio, one bedroom or two bedroom, everyone will have a parking right. space dedicated to That's their unit. That's what I understood. As part of their rent. No additional the, rent for the it. The difference is that they will not, even if somebody doesn't have a car, they cannot rent it to somebody else. Correct. It goes with the apartment. So even if it's unused, and that's where we've been coming up with these problems in the town, other landlords want to maximize their uh, rental potential. And if somebody doesn't need the, the space, they think they can get you know, on-street parking, which they can't because it's unfair to the neighborhood. So this is the reason why I asked you to add that, and I appreciate that. Yep, absolutely, my pleasure, and thank you very much. So, so I think the final question, though, Sue, and correct me if I'm wrong, is um, will, we be, will we receive an amended redevelopment plan? Is that correct? O only if you put on the record now, because this is your plan yeah. now. Yeah. This is a condition. Yeah, right. this is mm -hmm. a So I would suggest through Mr. Coffey, if he thinks I'm correct on this, is, is that when you pass the resolution, w the ordinance, you say, uh, the, the <coughs> contingent uh, upon the ca council would like to uh, instruct the planning board to make these amendments. If you don't make that amendment now, then he's will all go away, and then he'll have to go back to you, get authorization to reopen the plan, okay. go back to the planning board, and the, come back. The vote to would be null yeah. and void if it's if it's not passed on the contingencies that we're asking for. And I don't even call them contingencies, but right now. I'm not sure you have, I'm not sure the plan will allow for what you just said for the indoor loading zone. So if you just direct the planning board to, you know, to do what you say, then the plan will say, oh, you can do this. And then if they do it or not, that's, you know, that'll be something okay. based on. Okay. The, I'm not Jay. totally sure, but we don't usually do you have wanna, that. Uh, but, but okay. I Mr. Skillender, I think, wants to add something actually, too. Absolutely. Thank you, Sue. So, so in addition to this, again, these requests, um, uh, just for procedural sake, because we're uh, the middle of a vote right now, uh, these also could be made and presented in the redevelopment agreement for there, uh, where we can get a little bit more specific to the requests on the developer uh, okay. for that. So, you know, there, there's options that the uh, council has uh, at this point. Okay. The redevelopment agreement will govern how this property is is built. Um, so we can put it in the redevelopment agreement. That would, that would be great if we put it in so, the... So, let's, let's break this down into its components. So the, the first thing you want is that there's... 
Well, the no, parking spaces per, 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 per unit. Parking spaces have to be part of the unit. Correct. Right? right. That's nowhere in any document at this point, correct? Correct. But he's going to put the language in the lease agreement. Yeah, but there, correct. there's but no there's no obligation on the part right now. We need to have that reduced to writing. That could also be, that could be in the RDA. That could be in the RDA. That's okay. what I was expecting. And if we refuse to enter into the, uh, we do have a lot of, in fact, all the say in an RDA, really. If, if, if those terms aren't contained within the RDA, we're not passing the RDA. And Mr. Prasad understands that. So the right. first item that we're saying on the record is that the RDA, you understand that the RDA is going to have a provision in it, has to have a provision. This council will not pass it at a later date unless the parking spaces are included as part of the rent. Okay. Agreed. Sorry. Okay. Everybody understands. Okay. And then second component is this internal uh, drop off and, and um, um, loading dock. And, you know, they can't be in, in the exterior. Right now, Sue, you're saying. I, I, I'd have to look at the plan, which I don't have in front of me to check, but we normally don't have it, so I don't think it's in here. So I would just say you add it. You say that they can have indoor loading. Uh, to, to, with, within the re, within the redevelopment plan, we're saying that. So there would be a men, there would be part of the resolution passing a part of the ordinance that um, we're passing tonight would have to have a condition in it that says um, la language to the effect that the redevelopment plan the redevelopment plan is amended to reflect. Uh, oh, that's right. Correct. The redevelopment plan. Uh, shall permit indoor loading and and delivery. Okay. Okay. As a permitted use. As a permitted use. Okay. If I go back to my office and find it's already there, which I don't think it is, then I wouldn't have to do it. Okay. But we're I'm going to add that to the body of the ordinance to state that language. And everything else that Mr. Stone just said can be handled by the redevelopment agreement. But I also want to articulate, so that we're going to add to the ordinance. RDA is going to contain the lease language with respect to the lease. And is there anything else that we're concerned about? Again, just for clarity's sake on for the other uh, options, again, with the past practices that the municipality has been engaged in regarding the uh, on-street parking passes and the garbage, those have all been RDA issues. Uh, un understood. Okay, and, and is the, the garbage issue isn't an issue here, right? No, the you know developer uh, you know has agreed to that concession here. Okay, and that's part of again the standard language that we put in the redevelopment agreements, not the redevelopment plans. Okay, so we need a resolution to a, 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 I guess Madeline from a procedural standpoint, a resolution to amend the ordinance to reflect the language you said before about the uh, indoor loading um, to be permitted. Uh, to be considered a permitted use. Okay. Okay. Who'd like to move that amendment? I will. Second. Oh, second. Okay. I'm doubling back before we take the final vote for passage on the amendment, Mr. Booker. Okay, I just have one quick question. Um, as a as a representative of this council, does any of this go back to the to the planning board? It's been approved, but does it go back? My question. What we're talking about no. tonight? No. Tonight, but I'm saying once we once we do, but what you do tonight does not go back to the playing board. Thank you. You got to vote yes or no on the. Yes. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. And to go back to the resolution for final passage, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Matt, I just want to thank you. Um, as well as the developer for conceding to those, uh, what I feel are safety issues in that area, um, and I vote aye. And Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. And I just wanted to say real quick, thank you, Councilman Weaver, for working with us. Uh, you always kept an open line of communication and heard our thoughts, so we, we deeply do appreciate it. O3 is an ordinance of the City of Bayonne County of Hudson, New Jersey, adopting the redevelopment plan entitled Avenue F Redevelopment Plan for the property located at 86 East 22nd Street, 90 East 22nd Street, 
and 111 Avenue F, which is identified as Block 465, Lots 10, 9, 8.02, 8.03, 8.01, and 7, as shown on the official tax map of the City of Bayonne, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law, which was introduced and passed the first reading at the meeting held July 19th, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law, with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of April 16th, is now before the Council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution moved by Council Member Perez, giving the ordinance second reading. Mr. Lapalusa, will you second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance of the City of Bayonne County of Hudson, New Jersey, adopting the redevelopment plan entitled Avenue F Redevelopment Plan for the property located at 86, 86 East 22nd Street, 90 East 22nd Street, and 111 Avenue F, which is identified as Block 456, Lots 10, 9, 8.02, 8.03, 8.01, and Lot 7. The Council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The Council President will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. Mr. Maselli. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Michael Maselli, I represent the developer of this project. Just so we don't have to go through the, the uh, whole thing again, uh, my client has no problem doing the parking, inserting the parking language in the lease, putting that in the RDA. We have no problem doing the garbage pickup. That's been something we do as a standard thing, and I think it's a really good thing. Um, with regards to a dedicated loading space, our site is a little bit different. So our site doesn't have any non-residential. It doesn't have any commercial space in it. Um, it's also a fraction of the size of the, the Sampson site, and it also has an automated parking deck. Uh, because we are in the floodplain and had to elevate it and the parking had to be arranged in a certain way. So even if we had the space to pull them in, we have nowhere to park them. We will work with the, the planning board and the planner and we can commit to that to find some alternative to, to address the safety concerns. I just don't want to say on the public record that we absolutely can commit ourselves to that. We're just not, the building's not big enough to accommodate that. It's not designed that way. So uh, I understand the concern and we will address it. But if we, if we mandate it, it's going to be something we're going to be just not able to meet. So I would ask that the, that the council not do that for our site because of the distinctions that I just raised. Thank you. Anyone else? No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? So move. A second. And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. And resolution ordering final passage. So move. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? I appreciate the developer's uh, concessions on the previous uh, ordinance and on this one. Uh, that seems to be satisfactory to me. I believe it will be to the councilman as well. I, I would say that I hope that these become regular requirements of buildings and developments going forward because I think they all seem to be fairly uh, legitimate, reasonable, and beneficial to the community that surround those areas. So I'll vote aye. Mr. Perez? Uh, before I vote aye, I usually, Mikey comes in and, is, and he asked about the trees. So far, Mike has not asked about trees being planted around the area. Mike, what are you doing? <laughs> I vote aye. Ms. Weimer? So I'm, <clears throat> I'm just going to offer um, a couple of words as well because I, I want uh, Attorney Maselli to know that we, we do appreciate the concessions that he has made as well, and, and they were all things that I had requested of him also. Um, <clears throat> Mike, I'm also going to say that your, this property is located directly adjacent to that church um, and school of which I have a niece that attends. Um, so the quality of life for those residents and the safety of, of the children in that area are really what is at the forefront of my mind. And so I realize that your property <clears throat> and this footprint is much smaller than the property uh, across from it. So I, I realize that you have some tighter constraints and you couldn't agree to it, but I would hope that you would work in good faith to make certain that we could meet some sort of, of a safety <clears throat> loading, unloading, um, that we would instruct all deliveries and things of that nature. 
Um, the other thing I'm, I'm going to say uh, to, to both of you gentlemen, and I apologize, and I don't expect that um, we would go back and amend it now, but I also I'm, I'm concerned with the demolition and the building process um, because I, I don't want those roadways blocked in any way because they're both thoroughfares. So you're going to have to do that building and demolition on your footprint. Um, and as I said, I live exactly around the block from there, so I'm going to visit regularly. So with that, um, I do thank you and I, I vote aye. Mr. Lapalooza. So I personally agree with all these things being conditions. We've already been doing this in a lot of the uh, development. <clears throat> the, uh, the parking, the loading zone, private garbage pickup are all things that should be included in just about every multifamily uh, large building that we're, we're uh, considering. And uh, with that, I'll vote aye. Well, four is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne Chapter 35 zoning regulations, which was introduced and passed the first reading at the meeting held July 19th, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin board as required by law, with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of August 16th, is now before the Council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution giving the ordinance second reading is moved by the Council President. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne Chapter 35 zoning regulations. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest against, objections to. I just want to speak. Oh, Mike. It mentions 3rd and 4th Street. It's actually 4th and 5th, being that you're passing an ordinance. I'm on 04. Yeah. I'm on zoning regulation. Correct? Zoning We're regulation. We're on the one before that. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm on the wrong one. Yeah. Apologize. No problem. So it's no protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? Move it. Second. And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? I'm sorry, aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. And resolution ordering final passage? Move it. Second. And then on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. 05 is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne Chapter 7 traffic, which was introduced and passed the first reading at a meeting held July 19th, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law, mm -hmm. with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of August 16th, is now before the Council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution moved by the Council President giving the ordinance second reading. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Second reading is by title, an, ordin an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne Chapter 7 traffic. The Council will now is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The Council President will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. Mr. Morris. I believe you're right, Mr. Morris. I think it is between 4th and 5th Street. <coughs> it's, it's on the corner of 4th, and it's going up towards 5th Street. On the right-hand side. And we will fix that. Madeline, you have the ordinance in front of you? Yes. No, it has 3rd and 4th Street. Yeah, it says 3rd and 4th. It should be fourth and fifth. Okay. I'll double check the pink shit. I'll correct it before it's. Okay. Do I need to make a motion for the correction? To correct it, yeah. Well, with that, you want to close the hearing first? Sure, sure. Who'd like to? Who I'll, like I'll second? move it. Second. And on the motion to amend it to correct the street addresses for. 4th to 5th Street. 
Motion. Mr. Motion opposed is right. first we do motion, motion. closed. Mr. Booker. Aye. Oh. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. And Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. And then we have the amendment to I'll correct move. the streets. I'll move for the amendment. I'll second. And on the motion to amend to correct the streets from third and fourth to fourth and fifth, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. And resolution ordering final Move passage. It. Thank you. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Well, six is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne, Chapter 7 which was introduced and passed the first reading at the meeting held July 19th, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin board as required by law, with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of August 16th, is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And the resolution moved by Council Member Perez, given the ordinance second reading, Mr. Lapalusa, will you second? Second. On the resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance of amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne Chapter 7 traffic. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to Move close? It. On the motion to close, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. And or resolution ordering final pass. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Before we have our public comments, I want to remind everybody there is a five minute time limit on your public comments and that this is a meeting to discuss government business. Our first speaker is Gidget Terry. Hello, thank you. Um, I'm Gidget Terry and I am a licensed food truck in Bayonne. Um, but here recently, I've been getting tickets from the police and I went back to the health department to inquire what am I doing wrong because I studied the audience uh, to the letter and it tells me that I am permitted to sell as long as I'm 400 feet away from anyone selling what I'm selling, like restaurants. I'm a restaurant on wheels. And I'm over off of 440 by Costco's and LA Fitness. LA Fitness is a gym, so they're not selling empanadas. And Costco's is a grocery store. Um, they're not selling empanadas either. Um, so I went back to the health department and the law department, and they suggested that I come here to get answers on what am I following? And why am I getting tickets? Why, there's no sign where we're parked um, that says that this is a space that we can't park, uh, but this is the second time that the police has addressed us and they said that police chief would probably be here. So I'm seeking answers on what do we do? Because we got a license, and now they're telling us, no, you can't be here. So, Ms. Terry, I'm going to have our uh, director, Sue Cavanaugh, come up from the health department. I will tell you what I personally see, since I'm the councilman for there, and I travel that road all the time. There's three trucks in a row right on Goldsboro Drive. I've seen near accidents of people trying to pull over for your trucks, trying to get in and out of LA uh, Fitness. Um, I don't know if it's your individual truck, but one of those three trucks is what I'm trying to explain. So that seems like an issue to me that the police may have to 
address on a traffic note. But as far as what you're saying about the permit that you have, mm -hmm. I'm going to let Ms. Kavanaugh address that. Hi, we spoke on the phone yes, yesterday. Yes, we did. Yes. So as I explained to you yesterday, what, what I have to follow is the enforcement of that ordinance regarding the health department issues. I cannot answer you regarding the traffic department summonses that you received or uh, Joe Skillander is here and he can address the ordinance to explain it to you. Maybe you didn't understand when you called the, uh, the law department, but under my purview, I am concerned with food safety and the health standards for the delivery of food to the public. So we, we address that and we're fine with that. Right. So you're inspe you passed your inspections. Right. But that's all that is under my purview there. Right. So I'll, I'll give you to Mr. Skillander so he can explain the ordinance to you, Thank okay? You. Thank you, Susan. Ms. Terry, before Mr. Skillander speaks to you, do, do you mind if I ask you, what did the tickets you received note? Um, they said that I was by other food places, um, that this was a parking space not designated for a food truck, um, okay. that it was an illegal parking space, but there's no signs, no paint on the street, no nothing. So, so just to address the, uh, the ordinance here on this, uh, while food trucks are permitted within uh, the municipality, uh, within the city limits, uh, again, part of the ordinance also specifies to the amount of time that uh, the food truck has to be at a certain spot. They have to be, you know, really flagged down uh, by a uh, pedestrian in order to stop and conduct business. The, the ability to sit there and park all day um, is prohibited. And again, these are, uh, you know, we're looking at specifically, you know, in the health ordinance 21-3, uh, uh, sorry, 21-33 uh, at which regulates this activity here. Mm -hmm. And again, the food trucks must be, you know, if they're in a commercial zone, they have to be, um, you know, they could be parked there um, while they're flagged down to conduct the sale of business. They cannot, you know, remain on, you know, the city uh, street and have people, you know, approach them. They have to be, you know, so for argument's sake, Mr. Softy. Mr. Softy drives around, people flag uh, them down, uh, the sale occurs, Mr. Tr uh, Softy moves on. That is kind of the, how the ordinance is contemplated with food trucks operating within Bayonne. Uh, there are also some other uh, limits uh, to there uh, regarding how many uh, feet within a you know a food establishment, uh, you know, and then also a prohibition on uh, selling uh, within uh, conducting business within 100 feet of uh, city-owned property, uh, and then uh, another you know you can't uh, operate within 50 feet of another peddler. I think the the operative language is in 21-33.7 that says peddlers, hawkers, or vendors selling food or beverages intended for immediate consumption and make such sales in a commercial zone provided their equipment is parked or stopped only when engaged in a sale. Okay, so unless you're doing eight hours of continuous sale, you're supposed to be moving, all right? That, that, that language is pretty damning as far as what- It is, and right. we do a continuous eight hours of sales. People love Lady G and Panadis. Uh, I would, if, if you're, what time do you get there? Uh, on a Tuesday, we're there from 11 to 8. On a and, Thursday. And, and, and you're, you would represent to me that there's not a time between 11 and 8 that you're not selling something. Absolutely. Okay. I, I think we'd have to see that because it, you wouldn't, if the police are there, and no one is at your door. Patritus' hot dogs sat outside of 25th Street and Broadway for 20 years, maybe longer than that. It was a fixture there. Mm -hmm. And there were times when people weren't buying hot dogs. I, 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 I'm not saying you're not telling the truth, but I find well, it hard to believe that. Well, here's what we that. do. We're only here in Bayonne one to two days a week. So we give people the time to think about what they've been missing. And when they see us, they're chasing us down. Oh, oh okay. If, so if, if, if that's the case, yes. if there's eight straight hours or nine straight hours, as you're saying, of continual business, Mr. Softy should be getting your business model and, um, and, 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 and taking over for their own. Um, understand what that language says. You're supposed to be stopped or parked only. So when you pull over in the morning, there's people there waiting for you, right? 
They are. Okay. All right. I, we're, we're, and we come honest. for the lunch crowd at 11 o'clock. We're not there first thing in the morning. We're there. We start the lunch crowd, and then it goes straight into dinner. If you had a 10 minute, minute lull where nobody showed up, would you move the, the truck? Suppose if, it's raining. When it is raining, we leave. Okay, if there's because a, people if, don't if want to be a, out. Understand, rain. if there's a five minute lull or a 10 minute lull between somebody coming to buy, you're, you're breaking the law. If you're, you're, if you're look, I mean, you, you're looking. You I have to come and I, check it out. You know what? I had. Two empanadas today from right down the street. I'm going to have to check yours out next. Okay. It's Tuesdays. Tuesdays. I'll be there from 11 to 8. <laughs> <laughs> well, more, more first we have to get this clear. Partner. <laughs> <laughs> first we have to get this clarified because we was here on Tuesday. That was yesterday, and they made us go away, saying that we couldn't be. They shut, made all the customers leave, and told them that they couldn't buy from us. I'd have to, do you have the ticket? I don't have it. All right. Uh, you're going to call me tomorrow. I'm going okay. to come down and give you my card, and you're going to call me tomorrow, and we're going to go over this piece by piece. Okay. Because okay. I, I don't want to frustrate the businesses, but um, this is an inch yard issue, and mm -hmm. no good deed goes unpunished type right. of thing. Right. And we, we want to have a vibrant business community. We want to have people serve well. We want the people of Bayonne to be happy as yeah. far as what the, their offerings are. The flip side to that is people take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. and, and we've had to stop people from parking. You know, a, a hot dog stands, especially um, throughout Bayonne, um, you know, the empanadas and everything else is, is a little bit different. And, and you're, you're saying you're here once once a week? Once or twice. Uh, oh, oh. More than likely once a week. Okay, We're you, everywhere. These have got to be some pretty good empanadas. They to have really nine hours. are. <laughs> all, right, all right. Well, I'll tell you, next okay. Tuesday... I'll be there, okay. uh, but tomorrow I'm going to go get my card and give it to you. You're going to call me tomorrow. We're going to talk about the particulars, and I really not much I can do about the tickets. Until you, you know, I'm not wearing a robe. I'm an attorney, but I'm not okay. wearing a robe. You'd have to deal with that with a judge. I right? will. All right, thank you. Thank you. I have a couple questions. Sure. Yes. Is, is there a time limit listed on the ordinance or the permit? In the no. ordinance, there is no time listed. It is just say that the immediacy of the sale. So okay, because... That, um, I saw three trucks several nights in a row. You are not one of them, by the way. Right. You are not one of the three. Um, and I seen them even after midnight. There was a truck still there with no customers, obviously. But I just couldn't understand why that truck would have to be there when there wasn't a lot of traffic. Right. Um, so, so that's something that needs to be addressed. And it's all, all the trucks were parked right by the T, where Chosen Few Way, uh, converges with Goldsboro Drive. Right. So you have all that traffic going down the rest of the, the military base, the retail establishments, and the Costco, and it's a fiasco over there. So I would ask you whether you, even if you're within the limits, maybe you could just move a little bit further past, you know, where the two roads converge. So um, okay. I just think for a safety issue. And I believe there is a white line, like a shoulder painted on the street, if I'm not mistaken. But it, there's no sign that says no stopping or standing right. or anything. But um, I just want to let you know, for safety issues, even for yourself, your truck could get hit too. Right. Because I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of crazy drivers around that area. It's a lot. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you, and, and Jay's going to look into. Thank that. you. You're very welcome. Is it possible for someone to respond to somebody else? Like that? Um. If you want to make a comment about this, I'll let yeah, you. Yeah, great. that's fine. Hi, Vincent Fedor, 653 Avenue C. My question is, because I didn't understand the ordinance, didn't know about the ordinance. So if I, as a customer on the street, and I see them driving by, are you saying that the ordinance is saying that we flag them down? Yes. So what, how does that go about? If I'm in the middle of the street, or is it on a corner, or is it on the avenues? Uh, How does that work? I mean, you would have to just like a, an ice cream truck, you know, just wave. They, you know, hopefully the driver will see you and you know stop at a safe location. Well, with the ice cream trucks, my understanding is they have set routes. They'll play music when they're approaching and shut it off. But people know kind of where they're going to be at. Um, but I don't know of people stopping an ice cream truck. Oh, well, if I can, you can't write an ordinance that. 
that really covers every single situation. The good humor man comes, maybe finds a, a driveway, rings a bell, and people respond. They know to come running outside. You hear the Mr. Softy music or the other music, the one that has the hello, hello, and, and you, you go out and buy ice cream just to make them shut up with that song. Um, so we can't write an ordinance that covers everything. When it says flag it down, that, that's, it, it's kind of understood that this is how these trucks work. They, they play the music, you have a Pavlovian response to go get ice cream, and you go get your ice cream, and then they move on to the next block. And they might, I don't know if they have set routes, but they're driving up and down the streets playing the music, hoping that people pop out. Um, we don't have the kind of enforcement capabilities to, to, to follow every single ice cream truck and empanada truck and whatever truck, hot dog truck around town. Uh, but the fact is it's, it's worked well for I don't know how many decades. And now we might have to tweak it in order to, you know, to deal with today's circumstances where you have high end, hundreds of thousand dollars food truck, not just a, you know, a, a four wheel vehicle that has like a boiling water and some hot dogs in it. Uh, it's, a, it's a different world. Maybe we have to bring this up to uh, you know, and, and there's a counter argument to this, that, that this woman has a, um, a truck that she parked somewhere, she doesn't have to pay rent, she doesn't have to, you know, she paid a lot of money for the truck, I'm sure, and all the equipment, but there's a store that I bought my empanadas in today that pays rent and has to, you know, do, do things that they, they can't move. Uh, they can't go from spot to spot. They can't bring their business next to uh, an industrial park where, where they have a ready-made set of customers. So there's, there are counter, counterbalances to all these things, and I think it's both the purveyors of the food and, and the government to figure out a middle ground so everybody can be happy. Yeah, I think we'll be revisiting this as a council. So. Thank you. Um, Mr. Coffey, when you get uh, empanada, bring me one, please. Good evening, Council. <clears throat> I am El Rampador. I'm with Steve Across Town to Work. We're a 501c3 located here in Bayonne. We're fighting for wheelchair access, cannabis patients' rights, and the rights of us. I'm here with Bongolio, and I, um, I, we're all dressed in flamboyant, colorful colors because we cross the street in Bayonne. We have to be seen. Um, so we want to thank the council for the light on 49th and C. That light has made the streets a lot safer. So thank you, Gary. Thank you all for helping get the streets safer on Avenue C and 49th. People have been thanking us for that. Uh, Tommy, everybody who was involved in that. Um, that traffic light is very helpful. It's a turnpike artery. Ever since they put the circle in on Avenue E, it's a, turn, it's a turnpike artery, and it's a very dangerous intersection. So um, we want to talk about how dangerous this intersection is. Now, the problem is with this intersection, when there's people coming down 49th Street and you have somebody in the, in the crosswalk and somebody's parked in the yellow zone here, they can't see. People coming down from 49th Street can't see and they literally have to sneak their, their car out so that they can see the cars coming. And if you're in the crosswalk, it's even worse because this car is here blocking the, the oncoming the view. The same thing for the cars that are coming this way, they can't see. So it's very dangerous. So if people are parked in the yellow zones here, it's very, it makes it a very dangerous situation. So we need, what we need is a talking light. The blind people of Bayonne have reached out to me, two blind people. Now, can you imagine being blind, first of all? Can you imagine? We have to do everything we can as a community for the people that are blind, because I see them in Bayonne. They got the long sticks, and they get around. They're pretty good. They get around. But they need all the help they can get, believe me. And if they, have, if they ask me to advocate for a talking light, you're, you're, you're right, I'm going to advocate for a talking light for the blind. I never thought that was an issue. I was ignorant to it. I'm not anymore, and I don't want anybody else to be ignorant to these traffic lights for the blind. We need more traffic lights for the blind, not just one here on Broadway at 49th, but we need more traffic lights for the blind. Apparently, it's an issue. Uh, we have a petition at Angelo's. Angelo's is a, uh, it's a hot dog place, and Pastor Christina uh, prays for us. She actually prays for us before we do our laps on, on Broadway. And so the prayer is free. The hot dogs are great, but the prayer is free. So make sure you get your prayer at Angelo's. And um, th they keep us from interacting in a bad way. When we get our prayer, we don't uh, interact with the road ragers. People yell at us. 
But you know what? People more thank us now. People, have, people saw that we got the light on the Avenue C, and now they want the light here, and they thank us. If you watch our videos, you'll see dozens of people have thanked us for getting this, this, uh, this, this sign here, first of all. Thank you, Tommy, for the sign, because that sign actually helps people. That little sign will actually help people get across the street, because people were afraid to cross the street before that sign was there. And now it's there. Um, so, yeah, the talking light. Oh, and the cost of a talking light. I know the light was $300,000. Uh, $300, a talking light is going to be, what, $330,000? OK, well, let's, let's do that. Um, if it's a lot more, I'd like to know why a talking light would be more. Why, why disabilities have to be uh, nickel and dimed. So that's, that's another issue. So we have a song. We, well, we brought you an eighth. We actually brought you an eighth. No, not, not an eighth. It's an eighth of the song. And it's, uh, it has to do with this, this, um, this intersection. Because what happened was, we were, we were walking, I was, I was helping a baby across the street in a baby carriage, a real baby, and somebody actually beeped at the baby. They literally beeped at the baby carriage on, on the crosswalk. So as, as I was sitting there, we, we wrote a song. It's, it's called, Don't Beep at the Baby. The beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't honk that horn. Don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't honk that horn. Beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't honk that horn. Don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't honk that horn. Nobody stops for the sign. We need a traffic light for the blind. It's a very bad condition. We brought you a petition. Don't beep at the baby, you don't beep at the baby, you don't beep at the baby, don't honk that horn. Don't beep at the baby, you don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't honk that horn. Don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't honk that horn. Don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't honk that horn. I can't get across the street without cars driving on my feet. My own drivers need more common sense. We need less accidents. Don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't beep at the baby, don't honk that horn. Perfect. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys, try and wrap that up quick because we have other people that need to speak. But you guys did a great job. See that? You didn't miss anything. See that? You got your own show over here, so. Council President, Council, uh, Ms. Medina, everyone present, thank you for letting me stand up here. My name is Thomas Lyons, and this cause is very important to me. I believe in the Sativa Cross 501c3 organization and their advocacy for those with disabilities. This one in particular hits home to me because uh, up in Edgewater, my grandmother on Undercliff Avenue got hit by a car and she was blind. Uh, my uncle, my uncle Joe Klemaszewski was retired chief of police over there, um, you know, and he was able to be like, okay, there really is a need to protect our blind. And I learned that from him. Uh, he struggles with sight issues. I've struggled with sight issues. I have, um, I had to get corrective surgery so I could get a license. So I know what it's like to not be able to see well. And I met with these folks today at this particular intersection and I've been watching their videos, how they're crossing, going back and forth. And while I felt awkward doing that, I understand why they're doing that. All of the pedestrians and people that were walking around there, I felt like were in imminent danger because of this intersection. I believe that having these lights with uh, the vocal aspect could really help save our people. And it's loud going around with signs. I was wearing a costume earlier myself. People see that more than they see someone like me and just kind of blending in with a collared shirt. I really think that people could be helped not only with the lights, but with bollards in that area, in front of the stores. I believe that putting a bollard on each side of the corner could specifically help. If someone was, this diorama is actually amazing. Um, it's a very good depiction of the street. If someone's coming across that street and say they just get out of control, they're going to smash right into somebody. If there was a bollard there, a four-foot bollard, that could prevent an accident like that potentially saving someone's life. I understand the cost behind this is extravagant, uh, and budgets are tight. But if there's any way that this could be considered uh, to really 
I, I would challenge anyone that wanted to tell me that we should not advocate for the blind, that we should not advocate uh, for our disabled. So thank you again for my time, Council President, uh, Council, ma'am, thank you so much, uh, everyone that's listening. We have to take care of our disabled. Thank you. Safety is the most important thing to us, and uh, we appreciate the message. Thank you. Ms. Medina? 07 is a capital ordinance providing for various technical technology improvements by and in the city of Bayonne, in the county of Hudson, state of New Jersey, and appropriating $215,000 therefore from the capital surplus fund to pay for the cost thereof. And a resolution fixing Wednesday, September 20th, and the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as time and place for public hearing and final passage. It's moved by the council president, who'd like to second. Second. Okay. And on that res Resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. 08 is an ordinance of the City of Bayonne establishing a traffic, traffic control signal at the intersection of Avenue C and 49th Street. And fix, a resolution fixing Wednesday, September 20th, and the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage moved by Council President. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. On the resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. 09 is an ordinance of the City of Bayonne adopting the redevelopment plan entitled First Savings Redevelopment Plan for the property located at 562-568 Broadway, which is identified as Block 184, Lots 1, 2, and 3, as shown on the official tax map of the City of Bayonne, pursuant to the local redevelopment housing law, and a resolution fixing Wednesday, September 20th, and the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage. Who'd like to move it? So move. And second? Okay. Receiving no second, it won't be introduced. Madeline, as this is in the second ward, yeah. and I and I was given this when I walked in this evening. I haven't had time uh, to review this redevelopment plan. <clears throat> As you can imagine, I'm not overjoyed with a proposed nine-story building, if, if that's correct in what I, I got in my first few minutes of, of reading. So I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm not of the mind to second it. I'm not of the mind to vote for it at this point in time. But if Mr. Maselli has something to say that might add to my Absolutely, Mr. Uh, Council, Council President. Thank you. Um, I'll allow you to speak. But I appreciate I'm going it. To I ask, know. I know. And even I, and though I, you, I know. You didn't ask my permission. I know. No, I, I was back there, okay. and I, I just said I'm okay. going to ask permission from but the Council President. When you're done, I'm also going to ask uh, Ms. Mack or Ms. Sure. Skillner to come up. Of as course. Well, so. uh, the owner of this property bought this property three years ago, I think. Uh, we went through the area in need study in 2021. They knocked the building down. This is for those. Just to orient everybody, this is the hole in the ground on 26th Street across from the post office. We were working on a redevelopment plan at that time, which got stalled. And there were several different layouts analyzed. And we could do a six-story building here across the entire site and give Bayonne nothing uh, in terms of open space. Working with the planning department, it was the, the better layout was something that went up a little bit higher. And the reason we went higher is because it's not just a, a monolithic building. There are step backs. There are breaks in the building to allow relief so it's not so, so in your face. The other thing that we did when we went up that high is we provided a very nice open space uh, area, which I believe was designed by the city's planners. We didn't even have a hand in the design of that. So whatever the city wants there, the city's going to get. And it's going to be green which we don't have a lot of space on, green, green space on Broadway. Um, this is a nice building. There are no real residences around here. We have commercial uses all around, a post office. The, 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 uh, I just want to remind you how brown the landscape is around McDonald's. I know, no, and I actually you know, called them about that. I, I did call I them have. about that, and I'll, I will call them again if you want me okay. to, absolutely. Yes, I would. Okay, Thank you got it. Um, yeah, it's been something I've been Sorry fighting for. No, any problem, no, no problem. Um, it, it, like I said, it's not a monolithic building. It is a stepped back building. It is a building that ha will have a nice little arcade under it so people can sit on the, on the sidewalk. This took a long time to work out. The, the, the developer has waited a long time to get here. And um, 
I would urge the council to introduce this tonight, and I will be happy to meet with anybody who wants to discuss it. Councilwoman Weimer, I know that we met about uh, the, the one on Avenue F. Be happy to sit with you again. Uh, the planning board has recommended this as something that's consistent with the, the, the city's master plan. If we're going to do something at this height, this is a good place to do it. It's the best place to do it, and it gives us something back, a little place to sit, a little place for people to enjoy a nice summer day. Or maybe to have another Christmas tree or another event for something uh, in the heart of town, which we don't really have. And, and it, it's a shame, and, it, and this site can provide that. So I, I would just urge you, second this, let's move it. Again, we'll, we'll discuss it over the next month. That's what the introduction is for, so that we can have a hearing next month. But don't table this. These guys have invested a lot of time and money. So, so have your city professionals. It's been wonderful working with them, and I think we've done a nice job. And, and if you give us a chance to talk to you, we, we're confident that you will vote yes on this. Thank Mike, you. what's the proposed number of units in this? You know, we, we don't know the number of units now because the, I think the unit sizes might have changed in the final develop, redevelopment plan. Uh, there was a max on it at one point, um, and I just can't, it was like 100 units was the max. I'm not sure, we, we haven't really laid everything out because we're not sure what's going to be approved, but um, whatever it is, our parking will, of course, exceed uh, the standards uh, that are on Broadway now. And um, uh, yeah, I just don't know the exact number because I don't know what the mix is going to be uh, after this. Re like I said, this redevelopment plan was a little bit different than the one that we did two years ago. So we're still working through the design. We just needed to make sure that the box worked. Now we're working through the design to figure out how many units we can get in there and what the mix could be. So I do I'm, know that we don't, we don't have three bedrooms here, I don't think. I'm, I could I'm be willing to... Um, give a second on this to hear the information for next month. Okay. But I, too, am not happy about nine stories. You know, you and I yeah. have already been through this about other buildings on Broadway. Yes. Which <laughs> in the past, which was 10 stories. But uh, yeah. anyway, look, um, this was just approved last night, by the way. So I know you said it was approved by the planning board, but uh, I want the public to know. I think it was last week that it was recommended. Was it last week? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Last week. okay uh, but yeah. one, one week still. Yeah. It's not like it was a lot of time. But so I'd be willing to hear some more information on this building. I know Councilwoman Weimer is also, uh, you know, anxious as, yep. as I am to hear more on this. And thank you for your indulgence letting me speak. Okay. So I'll do the second, uh, okay. Madeline. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Excuse me. Are we allowed to make comments? Not into the well, public hearing. Oh, okay. All right, real quick. Uh, before Next month, Mike. Next month. Okay, uh, again, uh, Councilman Booker here. Listen, real quick, I was not, as a representative, again, as a representative for the council at the planning board, I was not at this meeting. All right, I'd like a little bit more information on it. I'm willing to vote I on this, but I still need to hear more, and I am concerned also about nine stories right on Broadway. And you mentioned something about residents. You also don't forget you have a housing complex behind that building. I don't know what kind of uh, considerations have been taken uh, for that project back there. There's quite a few residents back there. So, again, I'm, I'm willing to say, you know, hear more about it. So I'm not, you know, I'm not going to table it tonight. I would vote aye. Mr. Carroll? I, in the interest of hearing more information, I'm willing to vote aye. But I would say the same uh, with respect to height. A moment ago you mentioned that this is consistent with the master plan. But I feel the master plan has no consistency. I look around this town and I see patchwork uh, buildings go up. We, we don't seem to have a loft district, a town home district, a two-family two home district. I'd like to see that going forward. Uh, there's, and, and again, I don't fault you gentlemen. This, I understand this is a different builder than the one on 12th Street. But I have been fighting a battle now for months on end with families on 12th that can't cross uh, the street going across Broadway because an entire lane of traffic is taking up with what seems to be endless construction. So when I see something being built on a corner on a busy street, it, it concerns me. Now granted, the area that I'm complaining about has a few more residents than this, but you know, it's, it has certainly uh, tainted the way I look at these things because so many lives have been adversely affected. I see that there's a park here, a thousand square feet. 
I would hope that between now and when we revisit next month, some information can be provided as to perhaps that being used as a staging area so that the street is not affected and traffic is not affected to the most minor amount. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll vote aye to have more information for next month. Mr. Perez? Uh, <clears throat> before I vote, I would like to say that I totally agreed with Mr. Uh, Carroll here about the situation where it blocks the street and people couldn't walk the streets because that 12, that on 12th Street, I had to go there several times to talk to the people there because they were complaining that they couldn't walk, uh, walk by because of the situation of the development. Uh, now, hopefully that, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good, good, good uh, development and that we can work it out that it can conform to the way the city, uh, and uh, hopefully that we can work and, like Mr. Carroll said, make sure that that, that area where they claim they're going to have a, a city park can be utilized to put the machinery and, and down block the, the sidewalk in the street. I vote aye. Ms. Weimer? In all honesty, I have such reservations about introducing something that I don't agree with. And so I'm not comfortable with nine stories. I'm not saying that I, I couldn't get comfortable with something in between, but I'm not comfortable with nine stories on that corner. Um, I do like the aspect of the park, but as I said, I've only been given this a short while ago, so I've not had enough time to review it or read through it. <clears throat> and at this point in time, I just don't think, I'm just not comfortable with allowing something to be introduced if it's not something I would ultimately agree with because I don't believe in falsely misleading someone. So until I find out something more or get additional information that allows me to be comfortable with it, I'm just not, I just don't have it in me to agree. So I, I vote no. Okay, and Mr. Lapalusa. I'd like to hear some more information. I don't want to just vote no without knowing all the information. Um, I've already given you my views of where uh, I think nine is, is quite tall for that area. Uh, but I'm willing to hear some more. Mr. Carroll touched upon some issues that we've had all over town, a little bit more in your ward than anywhere else. Washington Parkway so. is another one that rings a bell. I hear complaints, even though technically I'm not the councilman, but we all know people from all over town. And um, that's just another one besides 12th Street. I've had a few there. I had the same problems uptown mm -hmm. with a couple projects. Um, I know Jackie, you know, in your ward, the same thing. So it's all over town. I would say that I don't know what's going to happen next month, but if, the, if this was approved, and I think moving forward, we should look at this for all projects that they have to provide a lot more effort to create room for those pedestrians because uh, right now they're being put out and the residents don't deserve that. The residents deserve better. They're being put out for several years for the project as it is and I think they could at least make a walking lane for them. I understand the parking has to go. People talk about progress but progress doesn't mean that people have to suffer and so I think that's where we have to go. So I'll vote aye to introduce this and I'll take the 30 days to uh, make my decision for next month. Okay. 010 is an ordinance of the City of Bayonne County of Hudson State in New Jersey approving a financial agreement buying between the City of Bayonne and Woodmount Bayonne Phase 2 Urban Renewal LLC for the property located on West 52nd Street, which property is identified as Block 37, Lot 1, as shown on the official <coughs> tax map of the city, and a resolution fixing Wednesday, September 20th, and the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for public hearing and final passage. Who'd like to move it? So moved. And second? I'll second it. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker. I'd like to defer for a moment. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carroll. I understand this is 15 years. 15 is that correct? years, starts at 12%, works its way up to 15% at the end. I, uh, that's a step in the right direction. It's been a little mm -hmm. bit since 15's come back. We had wanted to move in that direction. I hope that we double down and continue. 
I'm willing to introduce this uh, and vote aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Yeah, this is exactly the direction that I was very passionate about. The long-term pilots are not needed anymore. It was to spur development on. We have enough projects. 15 years is perfect for this, and I vote aye. And back to Mr. Booker. All right, after uh, consideration, and I'm listening, granted, uh, 15 years sounds definitely better than 20, 25, or 30. So uh, I'll vote aye. 11 is an ordinance of the City of Bayonne amending an encroachment agreement with QOZ Prospect Property Urban Renewal LLC for certain encroachments associated with 33 Prospect Avenue, which is identified as Block 455, Block 1.01, as shown on the official tax map of the city, and a resolution fixing Wednesday, September 20th, and the Dorothy Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage. Moving. Second. And on the resolution for introduction, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. 012 is an ordinance of the City of Bayonne amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne Chapter 7 traffic. And a resolution fixing Wednesday, September 20th, and the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for public hearing and final passage. It is deleting three restrictive zones and adding three. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Consent resolutions for communications is moved by the council as a whole. It is a resolution ordering the following communications to be received and filed. It covers C1 through C15. Any questions on the communications? Questions on communications, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Officers' report is a resolution moved by the council as a whole, ordering the following officers' reports to be received and filed, and any resolution incorporated within them to be adopted. It covers OR1 through OR4. Any questions? Oh, okay. Right, so. okay, on the remaining officers' reports, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. And Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. OR2. is from the Honorable James M. Davis fixing the salary range for the title Clean Neighborhood Programs Aid. Do you have a question? Hi, Vincent Fedor, 653 Avenue C again. Is this a new position? Uh, I was just wondering um, what this, this position is because I've never heard it before. We'll defer to our DPW director. Okay, um, it's it's a new it's a salary range. We're not putting out a position yet, but we don't have a salary range. Um, we would like to eventually have a clean neighborhood program aid. Um, someone that's out there making sure neighborhoods are clean. Uh, we don't have that yet, but we don't have a salary. We don't have a base. So how can we even hire someone until we get a salary and a and a place. So this is the first step towards probably doing something along those lines. Has a job description been written up yet or? It's civil service. It's on their website. Okay. Is this in place? Because we used to have the quality of life uh, department in Bayonne. Is this something that's kind of taken the place of that? Um, eventually, yeah, that's yeah, because right now we haven't had a quality of life program for a while. Basically, it's been up to DPW, who's ever available at the time, I'll send someone out there to go do the work, because we don't have that department that was cut out years ago. Thanks. And any other questions on OR2? And on that communications, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. 
Mr. LaFalusa. Aye. Consent resolutions is a resolution moved by the council as a whole. It's a resolution ordering the following re resolutions to be adopted. It covers CR1 through CR37. Any questions on the consent resolutions? Okay. Which one? Um, for CR5 and CR6. And also CR11. On the remaining consent resolutions, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. I vote aye, and I would just highlight CR 27 and how uh, very excited and happy I am that Cottage Street area and flood resiliency potential mitigation is moving forward. This is an area that's in desperate need, and I know all those residents are grateful that we're moving forward in that area. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. And Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R5 is authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement with Trinitas Regional Medical Center for addiction services in the amount to, not to exceed $12,000 for a period of one year, commencing September 1 through August 31st, 2024. Ben, did you want, what do you want, clarification on? Um, yeah, I was just wondering with the um, five and six, because the Bayonne Community Mental Health Center, that's under Trinitas, owns that, right? So is this kind of um, through grants that Bayonne kind of also facilitates what's going on at the Community Mental Health Center? Um, Ms. Howard's in charge of our grants. She can Hiya. explain that to you. And I would imagine the same question would be for five and six, right? Five and six, okay. correct. Yes, so the Community Development Block Grant is a grant that provides services for income eligible individuals. Um, and these services do, we do provide Trinitas funding to provide services described here, the substance abuse and in the psychiatric uh, services for individuals who do qualify based on income. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Mm -hmm. On CR5, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. LaFalusa? Uh, Ms. Howard, just a, a question. Um, how These numbers seem low. Like, uh, I, just curious compared to previous years, right. what was that um, like? Uh, again, you know, what HUD does is do a, they do a calculation of um, funding that's needed in a community, a formula that I'm not familiar with, but they make a determination. We did, last year we lost an additional 60,000 based on the performance of the city of Bayonne, which is a compliment because as long as Bayonne is doing well. That means it was a less they, of a need, exactly, right? You get okay. less money, out. and this year we lost an additional $3,000, so wow. yeah. So um, um, 3,775 dollars seems very Say that low. one more time. The, uh, I'm sorry, that's the 12,000. Each seems very low. It's very I mean, low. Yeah. Their typical ask is about 45000 um, This is public service funding. When we do a calculation of the total ask of, of public service funding, the amount is probably right around the $800,000 a year mark, of which we have $200,000 to give. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And CR6 is with agreement with Trinitas Regional Medical Center for psychiatric services for emotionally disturbed children in an amount not to exceed $12,000 for a period of one year. Same question? No, they've answered. Okay. So on that one, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. CR 11 authorizes the mayor and the city clerk to enter into an agreement with the Family Community Center for residential service program in the amount not to exceed $15,000 for a period of one year, commencing September 1, 2023. Okay. Is this also under BEOF? No, it's not BEOF. What uh, I and uh, Ashley Lambert Chavers manages the, the grant for the city of Bayonne. So this is CDBG funding that is given to the city of Bayonne for the low-income population through HUD. 
So it's not, um, they, the city actually owns the grant. We man, we deal the grant out for nonprofits in the uh, organization. Oh, okay. And You're kind of the, the, the bottleneck. Exactly. Okay. exactly. We okay. handle the day-to-day -day logistics. There's an excellent checks and balance because once we qualify individuals, delve the money out, we, um, you know, we disperse the funding in a reimbursement capacity, and everything is passed through Ms. Mauer, through the city, uh, through the city law department, and they are reimbursed for their services. So. Thank you. You very And it has to go through the council for approval. That is correct. And um, Ms. Howard does a great job. Probably. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Our one is awarding a contract to She International Corp for the purchase and implementation of the Edmonds GovTech escrow accounting module and tax collection program software through the New Jersey Cooperative Purchasing Alliance for a total amount not to exceed $48,429.47. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R2 is awarding a contract to HL Systems Inc. for the purchase and implementation of the pilot abatement software program for a total contract amount not to exceed $13,700. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R3 is authorizing the bulk sale tax levy. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R4 is awarding a contract to Worker Transmission Services of Bayonne, New Jersey for transmission repair services pursuant to the itemized list for the contract amount not to exceed $50,000 for a term of two years commencing September 1, 2023 through August 31st, 2025. So moved. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalus. Aye. R5 is authorizing a contract with Four Cleanup Inc. of North Bergen, New Jersey for the 2023 Roadway Improvements Phase 2 for a contract amount of $1,056,602.75. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R6 is ratifying and affirming the actions of the Director of Public Works in authorizing the Supervisor of Parks and Recreation to solicit three proposals for additional bus services necessary to provide transportation in connection with the city's 2023 Summer Recre Recreation Program and authorizing the continue continuation of bus, ser bus services from beloved Community Charter School, Inc. on an emergency basis for the remainder of the program and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement, amendment to the agreement number CY23061 with Beloved, increasing the same in the amount not to exceed $27,000 for an additional bus services, thereby making the total contract amount not to exceed $70,999. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Uh, we had a four, over 40% increase in participants in our summer programs this year. Um, that's a testament to our parks and recreation as well and um, getting people involved. And uh, with that, that's why this is needed, and I vote aye. R7 is adopting the preliminary investigation, investigation of an area in need of redevelopment and authorizing and directing the planning board to prepare a redevelopment plan for the property located at North Bay between 1st and 3rd Street, 4-22 Avenue A, 247-251 West 3rd Street, and 218-222 West 2nd Street, which is identified as Block 332, Lots 1, 6, and 7, Block 333.01, Lot 7, Block 373, Lots 1, 2, 13, and 14, as shown on the official tax map of the City of Bayonne. 
Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Our seven is adopting the preliminary investigation of an area in need of redevelopment and authorizing and directing the planning board to prepare a redevelopment plan for the property located at 21 29, 35, and 37 West 25th Street, which is identified as Block 183, Lots 5, 6, and 8.01, as shown on the official tax map of the City of Bayonne. Move it. Second. He's got a question. Yeah, come on. So uh, my understanding is that this is the forum, Jim, That's right? Correct. And the, um, the driveway that they have, but not the lot next to that, correct? The lot next, I don't know, there's a bunch of There's an of empty lot, lot that they, they uh, uh, Mr. Skilder, maybe you can answer that a little better. Sure, so the, the area that's, again, under uh, subject under investigation, uh, that the planning board um, found that uh, met the criteria for uh, to be designated as an area need of redevelopment. Um, for these, this would be the, the building of the Kessler uh, Rehabilitation Center. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the parking lot next to it for the empty lot. I, there's a, I'm, you may be mistaken that there, there's a building already being built on that lot that already have prior approval. Oh, you know, I'm probably still looking at uh, Google okay. Maps, which yeah. it's not been updated, but of course, you're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. The yeah, empty yeah. lot is gone. You're right. There's yeah, no yeah. Way. And then it's their parking lot. Can you tell Google Maps, please? Right. <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, so what, because that's also the forum. I mean, the rehab, it's also the forum gym, right? Yes, that's correct. So what is being done? Again, for, for this process, uh, there are, What's being proposed in front of the council right now is uh, for redevelopment, for the local redevelopment housing look, just from starting from the beginning of it to, you know, the end of the, you know, redevelopment phase, just for clarity's sake for everyone on this one point. So when a property is approached uh, or when a redeveloper approaches the city with a property, they ask the uh, city to, uh, you know, and the city council to conduct an investigation uh, called an area need study. So the uh, city council directs the planning board to conduct that study. The city council, uh, the planning board then takes that recommendation, studies that area. That takes a couple of months from there. And, you know, there are certain criteria that is listed within the, the uh, you know, municipal land use law on there or what, you know, creates, uh, you know, a condition of blight. Uh, from there, th they make a finding uh, based on, you know, some expert testimony, you know, presented by our uh, planning department who looks at, you know, those criteria. From there, that report, uh, which is currently happening right now, is being referred from the planning board now to the city council that it meets these criteria. And then what's up in front of the city council right now is whether or not to, you know, accept that, uh, you know, condition of blight. And then also, uh, you know, then direct the planning board to conduct the, uh, the site to be within a redevelopment plan and for it to, uh, you know, rectify those uh, situations. So again, for the for blight here, uh, you know, the, that re, uh, sometimes requires, you know, change in the zoning, uh, you know, bulk standards, uh, that, and that's what would occur within the redevelopment plan. And then from there, the planning board, uh, you know, the, our planning department and our professionals plan, uh, you know, a redevelopment plan for that uh, area. Then it, the planning board hears that area, we post everything online 10 days prior to the hearing, so for the public to review those reports. And then from there, this goes in front of the city council for its introduction, and then, uh, you know, second reading upon its, if it's passed at the council, then, okay. or sorry, the planning board. Uh, specifics yeah. will come later. Yes, yeah, specifics the, will come later, right. but that's the process of it. Yeah. No, I, and we're in the thank middle you for of that. that, of, you know, just that the, but the, you know, the, the criteria. I guess what, what comes up for me is, what is it they, they, what is the vision of what they want to happen? Is the, are we losing the gym? Well, right now, what the, for the vision of that, it's unknown. That's what the redevelopment plan is for. So when, you know, planning professionals will look at, you know, the area on, you know, its permitted uses, uh, you know, again, it could be, you know, or, you know, in fitting with the characteristic of the neighborhood, uh, looking at, you know, difference of, uh, you know, re whether it's, you know, residential, commercial, uh, it's, you know, there's a multitude of uh, uses that can go in there. Uh, you know, more than likely, again, in that 
current use of that building, the gym was probably not going to be there, but that wouldn't mean that the gym can come back in a different form where they mm -hmm. can build either above that, you know, again, dressing, dressing, you know, new, uh, you know, renovation of the gym. This is, again, just allowing for, you know, in the redevelopment plan that the planning board will have to hear to make sure consistency with the, the plans, uh, you know, for the far master plan, our city ordinance. Uh, and again, also to hear public comment at that time too. Okay. That. Thank you. And then would, again, would go back in front of the city council uh, for their review and again, public comment at that point too again. Appreciate it. Sure. Thanks. It's like, I guess I have a couple of questions too, Joe, if you don't mind. Sure. So, what exactly is the criteria that the planning board reviews that designates something an area in need? Now, a couple of months ago, you came to us and we were looking at another property um, that we were being considered for an area in need, and you said to me something to the effect of it's overgrown with weeds, it's unimproved property, it's vacant land, it's not paying any tax base, something of that nature. Now I'm looking at a fully functioning business that is well kept. Um, obviously pays its current tax rate, whatever it is that it's paying. Um, for me, I feel like it's fully functioning and it looks terrific. I, I, that's my first question. So I'd like to know what that criteria is because I'm, I'm not quite sure. I look, walk down the street and I look at that property and I feel as if it's an area in need of anything. Number one. Num number two, who is it that is requesting this study? Is it the current owner of that property? So the to answer to the second question first, uh, yes, the property owner is asking for this designation. Okay. <clears throat> he's asking, he has been in, uh, at the start of this process, he has approached the city several times about this and the you know repurposing of his asset. Okay, uh, so, so he's approached the city several times. Does that mean in the past that we did not designate it an area in need? Well, so the, no, the whole it, town is designated an area in need of redevelopment. Yeah. I don't know if you know so, that. So yeah, let's just also yeah. clarify yeah. that too, because so under under local housing and redevelopment law, there, there are two designations. So as you know, Council uh, President Lapalooza correctly pointed out, there is an area in need of rehabilitation. And that there's, you know, it's a loose requirement, but it also looks at housing stock uh, within a quarter mile uh, radius being over, uh, majority over 50 years or more. Uh, so the entire uh, municipality has been designated since uh, the uh, late 90s under that. On the Joe Doria, so it was yeah. the late 90s, yep. So from there, there's the second um, uh, okay. so criteria. So if yeah. in the past, if this, again, if the owner has come to us several times, in the past was the answer no, it was not an area in need? Well, again, it, it, this is when the owner comes to us and approach, it's asking on, you know, whether or not, you know, we're going to consider this, uh, you know, look sure. at the different, sure. uh, you know, approach it. Right. Um, so. Mr. Maselli also represents the, the property owner and can you know, speak to some of the, the meetings. Mr. Maselli, you are racking up billable hours. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> that and an ulcer. So um, we... Uh, good answer. Yeah, <laughs> that's the truth, though. That's why it's a good answer. So we, we, we approached the city before, around the time that, that First Savings did. And that's what, what Mr. Skillinger means by we approached them several times. We were in the process of getting this moving before 2022. And we let it sit for a certain period. You know, the city went through its period where it looked at the absorption. And so we did have to talk a couple of times to a couple of different people, because I think when we first approached the city, someone different was sitting in Joe's shoes. So that's what he means. It wasn't that the city uh, said no at any point. There was always interest in redeveloping this site. It's and dialogue, right? I mean, it just I'm sorry? Takes, yes. The dialogue takes Yeah, oh, absolutely, right. Yeah, it's been multiple rounds of dialogue with different people, different councils. Um, uh, so just to go back to the criteria, it is, it is an active site. That is not the sum and substance of, of what you look at when you're looking at an area need. The urban enterprise zone automatically, by law, if you were in the urban enterprise zone, you are an area in need of redevelopment. This property is in the urban enterprise zone. There is no question. So by that very criteria alone, this qualifies as an area in need of redevelopment. The second piece is, many of you probably don't know this, but that site is not in, that is in a residential zone, and you can correct me if I'm yes. wrong. It is currently in the R2 zone. It is not consonant with, with the zoning. Um, so it would be a, a, a pre-existing non-conforming use uh, for that. That would right. be the correct uh, terminology. So that's the second thing. It's not, it's not consonant with the zoning in the district. 
Um, but it's then, grandfathered in, so it's been there. So yeah, it's but you can't stay. do any, You can't really do anything. You can't expand it. You can't. It's tough. You got to go to the zoning board, right. and that's a roll of the dice. And nobody likes to do that with their business. Uh, and Pete's been here for you know 30, 40 years as a businessman. He wants to. He wants to do something nice here. You know, Pete did a great gym when it first opened, uh, and it is showing its age and it's old. And he wants to repurpose it. Uh, the third thing to consider is this is not very far from from uh, you know from public transportation and light rail. So it is. It is a transit, um, walkable, you know, walkable downtown kind of project. Uh, and that neighborhood, when you look at that neighborhood, there's a large multifamily building across the street. There's a multifamily building next to us. Um, and as you move closer to Broadway, there are businesses. Uh, so it's not, this isn't breaking, I, I understand going back into, into, from Broadway into Avenue C uh, is a concern, but this street isn't, like every other street in Bayonne, let's be honest with each other. It's, it's not a typical side street. The most centrally located right. business district So, area. So just like I said, just to go back to the criteria, by law, this is an area in need of redevelopment. We went through the process to make sure that we, it was in the UEZ and that the council confirms that it was in the UEZ. Uh, so that criteria alone is enough. We don't like to do one criteria. It really is better if you do others. So there's a, this is a smart growth project. And, uh, you know, there are site conditions that are not the best. You know, there's, there's open parking, there's, it's not screened, not really laid out the best. Uh, it's not really, there's, there's uh, no landscaping anywhere. If, um, if it meets the criteria by virtue of being in the UEZ, then mm -hmm. why then take the, why do we need to take some sort of action? Well, if it's already qualifying, why now come to us? What, so, what does our action do that makes it different? It confirms that it's in the UEZ. Yeah. It confirms that we looked at the map, the planning board looked at the map, the planning board confirmed it's in the UEZ, told you, council, it's in the UEZ, this is an area need of redevelopment. There are, listen, there are people who say that you don't need to do that. It is safer under the law to do that. There are people who say that you do need to do that. So we take the safer approach. We bring it to the planning board, have them look at it. Because the last thing you want to do is be wrong when you're just about to file an application for something, right? So, so we go through the exercise, and uh, and like I said, by virtue of law, by virtue of the law, it is automatically uh, an area needed redevelopment. So, you might not think that, but that's what the local redevelopment and housing law says, and and we and, and the MLUL says. So we have to live with that, and and I would hope that the board, uh, the council, would be guided by the the legal criteria. And just to also speak on, you know, to uh, Councilman Carroll's point on this, you know, we also do it this way again to allow another opportunity for, you know, for the public to be informed on, you know, what areas are be up, you know, are up for uh, redevelopment. You know, we're not trying to hide anything here. You know, there's going to be multiple, uh, you know, opportunities for the public uh, to have. Well, they get a on chance it. to hear not only the proposition but to speak on it on all those levels. If it went yes. to zoning, you'd have an additional meeting. But at least yeah. planning board and then city council. And yeah. that's the reason why you want the public to be informed and they can't get more information than what they can yeah. get at these meetings. Right. And also, uh, Council President Lapalooza, you know, part of, uh, at least, you know, from a policy perspective on going, you know, through this route, uh, this also allows the, uh, you know, this, the municipality to kind of be in a little bit more control on the redevelopment process, uh, you know, while, uh, you know, Mr. Maselli has mentioned about going to the zoning board there. Uh, you know, the zoning board, uh, you know, is a quasi-judicial board and has its own, you know, jurisdictional powers with that. And there are certain criteria, you know, that the zoning board can't grant relief upon. So, for argument, are they say, restricted to commercial use there? Well, no, no, no. no this is R2. this is an R two zone. So this as long as they, but but for ar but for yeah. argument's sake, and where, where I'm getting with this is that. If they came in right now as a, you know, an R2 zone, uh, you know, for residential, uh, you know, for they, the requirements that, you know, we add for, you know, any housing about, you know, back to, you know, our parking, back to our, uh, you know, garbage, you know, removal, you know, that is something that we have no control over. So if it goes in front of the zoning board, any application that, you know, is heard in that manner, you know, the city is responsible for that. And I don't think, you know, Director Cotter, you know, would appreciate picking up more garbage um, that he doesn't have to. And again, if we could keep this on, you know, the backs of the developers, I think that's a good win for the city at that point. So that's why, you know, we we have this very lengthy process to address the concerns, you know, that you know has been raised over the past. And then correct me if I'm wrong, but even though they've been grandfathered for the use of their business in the R2 zone, 
if they do new construction and they do mixed use, they'll have to go to zoning and get an approval on that. Yes, it is, because that would be a, a devariance, you know, for the permitted uses uh, there. Even though they've been conducting business that way on a new construction, they'd still need the approval. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And is the intended use for this Mike residential property? Is that what it's gonna, we're, we're looking at mixed use at the mixed property? Use. Yeah, I think I think that's a good transition from the residential neighborhood down to Broadway. As you move away from Avenue C, you now you, you now you're mixing the uses, and now you get to the commercial, right? So it, it is a good transition use. It is a good way to step it down from where the building uh, the, 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 the the building heights will be coming down as you go towards Broadway, and we just think it's a good transition area. It's a substantial piece of property on a very good street in Bayonne. And and like that's to see four it. lots there they have? Uh, there are th yeah, it's four. It, one of the lots was consolidated, so it really is four uh, lots. But yeah, yeah, it's three It's three on the tax records, but one of them, two of them had been consolidated previously. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you for that. No problem. Thank you, Joe, as well. Thanks. You're welcome. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? I'll, I'll digest that information and perhaps have a different opinion in the future, but it seems as though this council is the de facto planning board. I can't think of something in recent history that they've had any major objection to. Everything comes to us in the end anyway. Uh, I, it's a vibrant area, mixed use. We usually get a doctor's office and a nail salon. I, I don't really, you know, I, again, I, I don't want to fault the people that may come in the future, but that seems to be what the, what the norm is, and I don't find that to be a, an improvement on what's there already. So uh, I, I just, it doesn't meet my criteria, and again, since we seem to be the de facto board, I would, I don't know if it meets any of yours, but maybe you should think about it, but it doesn't meet mine, so I gotta vote no. Mr. Council President, if I could. It is not your criteria. I, it is yeah. legal criteria, right. Councilman. Let's Mike, be, I don't want to have a back right. No, 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 but, but, let's, let's, but, but just for the record, let's be clear. There are legal standards, not how you feel, right. not how I feel. Fair enough. So then there, why okay. go through right. the motion anyway? All right, guys, I'm going to stop I'm just letting now. you know. That That's you understanding. Need, you're you're going to go ultra Mr. Micelli, go please go back to your seat. Look, you're entitled to your, your comments as well, your, your opinions. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. I'm thinking along the lines of given the mixed use, <clears throat> it is in the urban enterprise zone, which, which we do know. Given the mixed use, um, I can't fault an owner for wanting to do more with his property. And so I think given all of that, um, I think he has a right. He's, he has been a business owner in this city for many years, and, and I know him as well, uh, he and his wife. So if, if he would like to inquire and, and see if he has any other options with his property, I, I think it would only be fair that we allow for him to do that. So I, I think I would vote aye in allowing the study to go through. And Mr. Lapalooza. Uh, I'm very interested to see this study, but it sounds to me like they're going to incorporate residential with some of the rehabilitation and exercise and things like that. So it's not a nail salon, it doesn't sound like it's gonna be, or some other retail location. I don't know until I see the plan, you're right, but I, that's worthy of giving them the uh, opportunity to prepare that plan and to allow me to see it, so I'll vote aye. Okay. R9 is authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a tripartite shared services agreement between the city of Bayonne the town of West New York as receivers of service and the town of Kearney as the provider of services, whereby the town of Kearney will provide licensed health officer services to the city of Bayonne and the town of West New York for a period commencing August 17, 2023 through August 16, 2024 in an, for an amount of $36,000 for each payable at the rate of $3,000 per month in form and substance as approved by the Lord Director. Move it. Second. <clears throat> On that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? And uh, this will fill the void as uh, we had our health officer leave recently, and um, I'll vote aye. R10 authorizes the execution, to, uh, authorize to execute an amendment to agreement 
number CY230024 with NW Financial Group LLC to increase the same in the amount not to exceed $50,000 to include payments attributable to the developers and redevelopers escrow accounts for financial analysis and or preparation of financial agreements and or applications for same, thereby making the total contract amount not to exceed $275,000. Move it. Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R11 is authorizing an amendment to agreement number CY230044 with TNM Associates for hy the hydraulic modeling to include additional modeling for development applications to be paid from the developer's escrow accounts. Move it. Second. And on that resolution. I'm sorry, before we vote on that, can somebody explain that to me? Please forgive um, me. I can, but I think Mr. Skillender can do it better. There's a lot of the. Uh, the grants will pay for the sewer and water system, but I'd rather have him explain it about how it's going to come out of uh, yeah. the developer's escrow. So, again, the original uh, you know authorization for the contract for this modeling uh, was paid out of a grant money. Uh, with all the development, uh, again, being proposed within the town, this would allow uh, the money to be paid out of developer's escrow. You know, so, again, this isn't the city paying the money. This is, you know... The developers that are asking for you know these you know projects that are being put in front of you that they, again this would be another cost that they would then incur you know instead of the city incurring and so when you're saying we're paying it out of the developers escrow accounts it does mean they have escrow accounts with us yes that is correct so and again so any type of project that is started with uh, the developer has to post an escrow account with the city to cover our professionals so for our you know we have you know uh, Matrix, CME, uh, Clark, Kate, and Hints, again, uh, our legal, yep. you know, so okay. all yep. those Understood. bills, you know, TRC, aren't paid. All that stuff. Yeah. All of that, right. That's not paid by the city, you know, they were paid by the, the developer, you know. Okay. Um, you know, we use that to our ben benefit, and again, it's, uh, you know, an added cost, uh, you know, an added um, thing that we make the developers do to, uh, you know, you know, not, if they want to build in our town, again, you know, put the, put the money up. Front, so and you know, pay the cost of the city to get you know what you want. Right, right, and that's fine. And so now we're just going to go ahead and take those costs. We're going to attribute them directly to their escrow account. So we'll just reduce the amount they have on escrow. Well, currently we do this right now. We're just adding another uh, professional another. to this. So they, I see. I see. They okay. Put a, a bunch yep. of money into the escrow account, no, and we I, draw it down on these. I, I know how it works. Yeah. I, okay. I just didn't understand why we were. Okay having a line item specific to yeah we, okay we, that's we didn't have you know tnm wasn't um, a part of that wasn't a part of it and now they will be that's i understand thank you jeff yeah. and on that resolution mr booker aye mr carroll aye mr perez aye Ms. weimer aye mr lapalusa aye all right 12 is endorsing the preliminary preferred alternate alternative description of the New Jersey Department of Transportation project for the pedestrian overpass over Route 440 at 34th Street in the city of Bayonne. I'll move that. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Oh, got a question. Do I have to keep saying my address each time I come up? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Has it been decided yet if it's going to be enclosed or not, the bridge? Is this the time to talk about that? Um, it's a pedestrian walkway, so in a way, you know, uh, does it need to have an overhead? Does it need to be protected from the elements? Because it's, you know, a very quick walkthrough, and I get that. The only reason I think that it should be fully enclosed is really from a litigation standpoint. Because if you have rain that is very horizontal from windy day and the floor is wet, you know, people are going to fall because it's, it's rain, not. It's rain, it's snow, it's people throwing things. And it's, and it's yeah. safety issues. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It really is. And I, I think the alternative description, the one that was deemed alternative, is the one fully enclosed. Yeah. Sue, are we correct? Yes. Yeah. It's, this oh, would be okay. the one that would be fully enclosed, covered yeah. with, with. This was the preferred from pretty much from the other alternatives from all of us from those meetings that we had and at our caucus meeting last week as well and that was very helpful having all those presentations Thank you. Good. yeah thanks 
Excellent. Uh, Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R13 is authorizing the execution of an estoppel and recognition agreement with Lofts of Avenue E Urban Renewal Entity 1 LLC and Lofts of Avenue E Urban Renewal 2 LLC with the City of Bayonne for the properties located at 306 322 Avenue E and 317 Avenue E, which properties are identified as Block 4, 440, Lot 4.01, and Block 190, Lot 5.02. So, Mr. Skillen, do you want to explain this as well? Certainly. So, yes. So, this is, you know, for starters, this is a bank document. This is has nothing to do really with the developer. This is he is, you know, ending his redevelopment op plan obligations with it, and as you know switching from a construction loan to a more permanent loan and the bank just wants, you know, some security, you know, some assurities that they are up you know, to date on, you know, their obligations with the city. They've paid all our escrow, you know, professionals, taxes, uh, you know, so, and this also allows them to step into the shoes of the uh, property owner now, because uh, the property is now developed uh, in the event that they, you know, do fault. So the bank can then, you know, protect its investment um, that it's giving them. So this is, this is a refinancing document, uh, and the city just has to acknowledge uh, that fact. Thank you. And who would like to move it? Move oh. it. Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Our 14 is authorizing the execution of an amended redevelopment agreement with QOZ Prospect Property Urban Renewal LLC. 433 Prospect Avenue, which is identified as Block 445, Lot 1.01. Who'd like to move it? I move. And second? Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Uh, real quick, can I get a little explanation on this, uh, if you might, uh, Joe? Morning. Thanks. Sure. So earlier in the, uh, the night, you voted upon, um, you know, for an ordinance. Uh, the uh, uh, it's yeah, it's permitting the it's an awning uh, that will be permitted into the right of way. Uh, this redevelopment agreement will f reflect that change, um, you know, because the project description is changing. So that's what this document is doing. And this was originally approved, Joe, in 2020. Yes, that's correct. So and. Okay, and so, and also the, uh, um, Mr. Maselli, who represents them, uh, also has let me know that uh, in this, the building was redesigned to not affect our city's force main there. So again, you know, the, I want sure to make the, make sure that the documents speak to all the actual fact of what the project uh, is happening. So um, those, again, with that, because of a project description, it lists, you know, how many unit counts, the the awning, you know, you kind of restrict it as much as you can. Uh, so a redesign of the building would would require a uh, an amendment to the uh, redevelopment agreement. Okay, thank you. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. 15 is authorizing and directing the planning board to reopen the H Street rehabil uh, Rehabilitation Area Plan. Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Okay, we're going to move R16 because we have a couple of add-ons. So we're going to start with add one which is from the Honorable James M. Davis, appointing Charlie Petro to the Rent Control Board as a regular member, term to expire August 31st, 2026. Move it. Second. And on that resolution and appointment, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Aye. Two. Order. 
is amending and restating resolution 20-12-16071 adopted December 20th, 22, entitled Resolution of the City of Bayonne in the County of Hudson, determining form and other details of the note relating to the water, water bank construction financing program of the New Jersey Infrastructure Bank to be issued in the principal amount up to $2,082,786 and, <clears throat> and providing for the assistance and sale of such note to the New Jersey Infrastructure Bank and authorizing the execution and delivery of such note of the City of Bayonne in favor of the New Jersey iBank all uh, pursuant to the Water Bank Construction Financing Program of the New Jersey iBank. That was a mouthful. Who would like to move it? Move. Second. And on air two, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. Aye. Air three. Is similar to Ed 2, but it, um, it's a resolution determining the form and other details mm -hmm. of not exceeding $2,082,786,000 in general obligation bonds with the City of Bayonne in the County of Hudson and providing that the sale of the new, to the New Jersey I Bank and the State of New Jersey pursuant to the Water Bank Finance Program of the New Jersey Infrastructure Bank and authorizing the execution and delivery of certain loan agreements and escrow agreements in connection therewith. Move it. Second. And on that one, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. Aye. And four is authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement to amendment um, agreement number CY23037 with John Pavlich to include additional professional traffic engineering services to perform traffic data collection along Route 440, Avenue 8, and the Peninsula of Bayonne Harbor that was not anticipated at the time of the original contract award and increasing the same in the amount of $25,000. So moved. Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Five is an ordinance, the city of Bayonne adopting the amendment to the 218-222 Broadway redevelopment plan, which property is identified as block 319, lot 26, as shown on the official tax map of the city of Bayonne. And it's a resolution fixing Wednesday, September 20th, and the Dorothy Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage. Who'd like to move it? So moved. Second. Second. And on that introduction, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. Aye. And the last one is at six. It is adopting the revised deferred compensation plan for the purpose of making available available employees the accrued of tax benefits under Section 457 deferred compensation plan. A move. And a second. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. Aye. And R16 is authorizing the closed session to discuss matters pending litigation pursuant to NJSA 10-4-12. It's my understanding we will be coming back out. Who would like to move it? Move it. Okay. And on R16, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. Aye. Motion to reconvene. I'll second. Are we on the air? Yes. Aye.
unveiled to be developers residential, block 780 Urban Renewal LLC, where the property is located at 155 Goldsboro Drive, which property is identified as block 790, lot 1.01, as shown on the official tax map of the city. And a resolution fixing Wednesday, September 20th, as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage, we'd like to move it. Move it. Second. And on that introduction, Mr. Booker. Aye. And seven also is approving an amended and restated financial agreement by and between the City of Bayonne and Bayonne Redeveloper Residential Block 790 Urban Renewal LLC for the property located at 110 Goldsboro Drive, which property is identified as Block 720 Lot 1, as shown on the official tax map of the city. And resolution fixing Wednesday, September 20th, this time and place for a public hearing and final passage. Who would like to move it? So move. Aye. Move it. Second. And I want to wish everybody a, a great Labor Day weekend and continued enjoyment for your summer. And we'll see you next month. Aye. 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 Good night.